This video is going to reveal false facts about space that way too many people believe. Is space really cold? Is Mars actually red? I poured over countless articles and expert interviews to come up with a list of the most interesting false facts that are out there. Picture this, you're floating in the vastness of space, tethered to your spacecraft. In the distance, you see a swirling darkness, a black hole. Your heart starts racing. This is it, you think. I'm about to get sucked in and spaghettified, stretched into a long, thin piece of space pasta. But hold on a second. Let's clear up some misconceptions. Despite their ominous reputation and portrayal in movies, black holes aren't these insatiable vacuums that go around devouring everything in sight. In reality, a black hole is a region of space-time where gravity is so strong that not even light can escape. But here's the kicker. You'd have to be incredibly close to a black hole to get pulled in. We're talking crossing the event horizon close, which is the boundary around the black hole beyond which escape is impossible. And guess what? If the sun were to suddenly turn into a black hole, and don't worry, it won't, it's not nearly massive enough, but if it did, Earth wouldn't get sucked in. Our planet would continue orbiting, just as it does now, thanks to the laws of gravity. So the idea that black holes are out there, lurking, like supernatural vacuum cleaners just waiting to suck up entire galaxies, is pure science fiction. After debunking that black hole myth, let's shift our focus to something we all take for granted, sound. Ever watched a Star Wars movie and been captivated by the epic space battles? Lasers zapping, X-wings roaring, and TIE fighter explosions that shake your home theater? It's exhilarating, right? But here's the thing. If you were actually out there, floating among the stars, you wouldn't hear a thing. Nada. Nothing. And why is that? Space is a vacuum, devoid of any air or other medium for sound to travel through. Those laser blasts and epic explosions would actually be happening in utter silence. Imagine Luke Skywalker making that one in a million shot to destroy the Death Star, and all you hear is nothing. This isn't just Hollywood magic. It's a misconception that extends to how we perceive real life space exploration. You've probably watched a rocket launch and heard the powerful engines roar. But once that rocket leaves Earth's atmosphere, it enters a realm of silence. Inside the spacecraft, the astronauts would hear only the sounds that travel through the walls or their own suits. So the next time you're rewatching Star Wars, just remember, the final frontier is a lot quieter than you think. Moving from the silence of space to the mysteries of our closest celestial neighbor, you've probably heard the phrase dark side of the moon countless times. Maybe you've even jammed out to Pink Floyd's iconic album by the same name. It conjures up images of a mysterious, unexplored realm that never sees the light of day. But here's where things get interesting. There's actually no permanently dark side of the moon. Surprised? The moon is tidally locked with Earth, which means the same side always faces us. But that doesn't mean the other side is shrouded in eternal darkness. In reality, both sides of the moon experience roughly equal amounts of daylight and darkness. When one side is dark, the other is light, and vice versa. It's just that we can't see the far side from Earth, which is why it's often called the dark side. This myth has even influenced how we think about space exploration. For years, people thought the far side of the moon would be a great place for a secret base, or even extraterrestrial activity. But when spacecraft finally got a good look, it turned out to be just as barren and puckmarked as the side we see in the sky. So the next time you hear someone talk about the dark side of the moon, you can enlighten them with some lunar facts. It's not dark, it's just not facing us. Now that we've cleared up those lunar misconceptions, let's imagine a different scenario. You're an astronaut out on a spacewalk, floating outside the International Space Station. Suddenly, there's a tear in your spacesuit. Panic sets in. You've seen enough sci-fi horror films to think you're about to explode, or maybe become a popsicle. But guess what? That's not what would happen. Contrary to what Hollywood would have you believe, humans don't explode in the vacuum of space. The lack of atmospheric pressure would cause some problems, big ones, like the fluids in your body starting to vaporize, which would lead to swelling. But your skin and underlying tissue would provide enough pressure to keep you from bursting like a balloon. It's not a pleasant scenario by any means. You'd lose consciousness within 15 seconds due to hypoxia, a lack of oxygen, but you wouldn't explode or instantly freeze. In fact, it would take a while for your body to cool down because space is a vacuum and vacuums are poor conductors of heat. The next time you're watching a movie like Total Recall, where characters suffer all sorts of gruesome fates in the vacuum of space, remember, it's more fiction than fact. 
The real dangers of space are far less dramatic, but just as concerning. Switching gears, let's talk about your next vacation destination, Mercury. You might think that being the planet closest to the sun, it would be the hottest spot in our solar system. You're already picturing yourself in a heat-resistant spacesuit, bracing for scorching temperatures on Mercury's finest beaches. But hold on a second, you might want to redirect that spacecraft, because Mercury is not the hottest planet in our solar system. That title actually goes to Venus. Despite being the second closest planet from the sun, Venus has a thick atmosphere filled with carbon dioxide, creating a runway greenhouse effect. This traps heat so effectively that surface temperatures can soar up to 900 degrees Fahrenheit. That's hot enough to melt lead. This misconception isn't just a trivial fact. It has implications for how we understand planetary science. For instance, the temperature of a planet isn't solely determined by its distance from the sun. Factors like atmospheric composition play a huge role, which is why studying Venus helps us understand more about climate change on Earth. So, if you're planning that hypothetical space vacation, maybe skip Venus unless you're a fan of extreme heat. And the next time someone says Mercury is the hottest planet, you'll know better. Speaking of other planets, you might be scrolling through social media and come across a stunning image of Saturn with its majestic rings. It's a sight to behold, and you can't help but think, wow, Saturn is so unique. But Saturn isn't the only ringed planet in our solar system. That's right, Jupiter, Uranus, and Neptune also have ring systems, although they're not as prominent or as easily visible from Earth. Jupiter's rings are made of dust particles, while Uranus and Neptune have darker, more subdued rings composed of ice and rock. This myth is so pervasive that it even affects how we view our own place in the cosmos. We often think of Earth as lacking in the grandeur that other planets possess, simply because it doesn't have rings. But the truth is, ring systems are much more common than you might think. They're certainly not exclusive to Saturn. So the next time you're awestruck by images of Saturn's majestic rings, just remember that other planets in our solar system have their own unique and fascinating ring systems too. And who knows, maybe we'll one day discover even more ringed planets far beyond our solar system. Leaving the rings of Saturn behind, let's zoom in on a planet that's a bit closer to home, Mars. Often called the Red Planet, has been the subject of fascination and countless sci-fi stories. You might envision a landscape of red rocks and crimson skies. But what if Mars isn't as red as we've been led to believe? Here's the deal. Mars does have a reddish appearance, but that's mainly due to the iron oxide, or rust as it's commonly known, on its surface. But the planet itself isn't really red. In fact, Mars has a variety of colors, including, but not limited to, browns, golds, and even blues in its sunsets. The red hue is more like a filter or a film affecting how we perceive the planet from afar. This misconception even influenced how we think about potential life on Mars. The red color has often been associated with harsh, uninhabitable conditions. But Mars is more complex than that. It has polar ice caps, and evidence suggests it once had rivers and lakes. So if you're ever looking at pictures of Mars or watching a movie that features the red planet, remember that it's not all red. It's a world with a diverse landscape, just waiting to be further explored. After exploring the colorful landscapes of Mars, you might be wondering about the temperature up there in space. Many of us picture space as an endless freezer, colder than a winter night in Antarctica. But get ready for a curveball. Space isn't cold the way you're imagining it. In space, the concept of temperature is a bit of a head-scratcher. It's a vacuum, so it doesn't have a temperature of its own. What's hot or cold in space depends on whether you're in the sun or in the shade. In direct sunlight, you could experience temperatures soaring up to thousands of degrees Fahrenheit. On the flip side, if you're in the shadow of a planet, temperatures can plummet to near absolute zero. And this isn't just a fun fact, it's crucial for astronauts. Their space suits are engineered to handle these wild temperature swings, offering protection against both extreme heat and extreme cold. So the next time you're watching something making space look like a big icebox where everything freezes, you've got the facts to know better.